Um, and so we are recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm Elaine Friend. This is Annette Desort, and we're international consultants on high sensitivity. And we're recording a Facebook Live that we're doing in August of 2021 first time ever so this is um kind of new to us so hopefully everything will be going well um so it's great to be here together with you elaine <laughs> oh it is so good and i'm really um happy that we're experimenting with this way of supporting highly sensitive people so let's just say if you're seeing this live on facebook in the elaine aaron and high sensitivity group then, and you'd like to ask us a question or put in a comment, please do so below the video. If you're seeing this on YouTube, once again, please put things in the comments. Um, you know, one of the highly sensitive persons five to thrive is knowing other highly sensitive people, knowing people like you. And, you know, Elaine Aaron didn't just make that up out of the blue. It's, it's one of the traits of resiliency when you know others like you and you don't feel terminally unique. So, by building community in this way and always, we support each other and we support our own mental health and our own thriving. So that's why we're here. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, either way, if you're if you're watching, and uh, then it might be also if you have, like Elaine said, if you have questions, you can type them in the comments below. But uh, maybe you could also uh, press like to see if if. If anyone is watching indeed. <laughs> yes, let us know, please, please. Yes, that would be so nice. Yeah. So yeah. Annette, I did my first Instagram live interview yesterday. Oh, that's and so awesome. I, I think this is a good time to sort of just talk a lot about visibility as a highly sensitive person. And, um, you know, I'm pretty strongly introverted as well. And, you know, it was, uh, it was stress, 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 stress leading up to it. And not only that, I was flying across the United States yesterday and my flights were late and uh, then my Lyft driver was late. <laughs> and so, you know, and I was just going to have to do it at my friend's house in a different city where the airport is. And I like walked in just on time and I couldn't even really figure out how to get on. I, you know, I found her, the person I was with, um, Dr. Ann Louise Lockhart. She's a pediatric psychologist and she does. Um, a lot of support for parents raising children. And once she did a small course on highly sensitive children. And so I started reaching out to her and following her and saying, you know, let's talk. I would love to bring, you know, she has grown her following dramatically. I mean, this group, Elaine Aaron and high sensitivity has grown. Oh, 2,500 yes. people since um, the ICHS started administering it and moderating mm -hmm. it. So, um, so anyway, I was kind of a doofus about it, but eventually I got on. Yeah. And it was great just to be able to talk about sensitive youth and, you know, a whole, to a whole new audience. And all these people were commenting, oh, my gosh, this sounds just like my child. This is just like my kid, you know. Oh, and one of the questions that came up was um, parents are always saying, um, I want to toughen these kids up. These mm -hmm. kids need to be toughened up so that they can survive in the world, especially teenagers as they're going into, you know, more strongly challenging social situations and academic situations. And Dr. Lockhart asked me, you know, what about that? What about that advice to toughen the kids up? And I saw your facial expression and, you know, that you agree with me. It's like toughening up is the last thing they need. Yeah. You know, and I, I just, I said, what would it be like if everybody in the world was had a tough exterior shell and just had their armor up all the time and were wielding their swords or they had their fists up ready to fight all the time all we would ever i mean we have too much war as it is with 80 percent like that so we need the 20 percent. so please don't toughen up yeah. or don't try to toughen up your sensitive youth you know but no, it was just exactly it, it, but oh but it brings up this thing about being here live i don't know about you today gearing up to this but there is a certain need to toughen up to be able to extend myself you know yeah. like to be here i have to have a little a little harder shell to be exposed you know yeah, online exactly. especially it's, live it's i think it's something you grow a little into that when you first start speaking up more about hsp and and becoming a coach and stuff like for me, then becoming a coach, then it, it becomes a little bit more that you're 
visible to other people. And so you have to become also a little bit more, uh, I don't know, comfortable and, and confident with what you have to share with people. And then again, doing stuff like this, like with Facebook or with Instagram, you also have to become a little bit tech savvy to find out how is this working and everything. And that alone right it adds a little bit stress, like, how am I going to do this? Will it work? And if it's not working, then you get stressed. And so, yeah, it's it's um, it's challenging, I think, but I think Although, it's something you grow in. <laughs> I have to bust us, though. We're of a certain generation where maybe the tech piece is a little harder for us. You That's know, if we true. were 20 somethings or 30 somethings, we would probably just be so fluent. We have a question already. Should, we, yes, should I read it out loud? Or do you want to read it? Yeah, sure. Um, from Elizabeth, uh, do you see a relationship between HSP and anxiety, particularly in children, uh, even if adults in their life uh, understand and support their sensitivity? Should I jump in or do you want to jump in? It's a great um, question. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I think a lot of HSPs, they do experience anxiety, but um, I don't think it's particularly, uh, one isn't the consequence of the other, I think. I mean, you can have anxiety, of course, but it's not per, uh, per se related to being sensitive, um, I think. But maybe you want to go a little bit deeper into that or? Yeah, since I'm the, the pediatric person. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the thing is that I have anxiety. I, I, ch I am challenged by anxiety, I should say. But I think when we're talking about anxiety, like a mental illness or a mental health diagnosis, we might be talking about a, a, more, a higher elevation of overstimulation. So remember when we identify highly sensitive people, the fact that we process things so deeply and notice so much and have such strong feelings makes us easily over aroused or overstimulated you could also use the O word overwhelmed. And I like to use um, overwhelmed with children a lot. Like maybe it's just too much. And that can look like feeling anxious and worried. It can look like anxiety. It doesn't mean that it's actually say generalized anxiety disorder, which would be sort of a basic anxiety diagnosis or adjustment disorder with anxious features. So let's just say that, um, Definitely sensitive children and sensitive adults can have anxiety because of differential susceptibility. Don't forget, it's still August as we record this, which I have declared differential susceptibility month. So I'm, I have to weave it into our discussion as much as possible <laughs> because of differential susceptibility, our environments will impact us more than other people. So in a stressful situation, we are more inclined to become more overwhelmed and potentially even anxious or depressed because of it. And a lot of sensitive adults, because of their childhoods, not being perfectly supportive, even though, you know, I had plenty of times I was told to toughen up, but I had plenty of awesome experiences in my childhood, which is why I can show up here today <laughs> and, and do this. But I still struggle with um, depression and anxiety, not so much chronically or clinically these days, but they, they're they always kind of right there, a possibility. So when a trauma happens or something challenging happens in my life, I can quickly spin out. So Elizabeth, if you would like to um, put some more detail, what I'd like, I'll, I'm just going to say a little bit more, and then maybe you can give me some more, info, give us some more information. We'd be happy to dig into this even more, but Anxiety can become a habit, just like chronic overstimulation. So I can't tell you the number of parents and adult HSPs I talk to who are spending way too much of their lives overwhelmed and overstimulated. And uh, we, you know, one thing I would really love to, to know, Elizabeth, is the age of this child. But we can talk more globally because if it's a school-aged child, if they are a school-aged child, then probably just school is almost more than they can manage in terms of becoming overstimulated. So they might come home from school or even at school and be really overdone and overwhelmed and even anxious. Uh, she's, the, the child is seven. Mm -hmm. So a seven-year-old you know, trying to go to school and navigate all of that is probably overtired, for example. So um, I guess the next question is, What's, the, what's a mother to do with a seven-year-old 
overwhelmed, overstimulated, sometimes anxious, sensitive child. What do you think, Annette? You have so many good tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think one of the main and the most important things with children is to let them know that they are perfect as they are and not having to have adapt to adapt to other things. I mean, you might feel that way. I mean, that's what we HSPs always feel, right? We have to adapt to other standards that we are uh, encountering in our daily life. But I think one of the main things to really know, and especially if you have learned this from childhood on, to know that you are you are good, you're basic, you're perfect as you are. And even though you might need different things, um, need, need maybe different care or uh, different things to feel okay, that's fine. But you are perfect as you are. And also as a, as a parent to teach your your child, I think, and to let them know they are just fine. There, nothing is wrong with them. I think that's one of the main important things to to teach your child uh, from early on. I, I totally agree, and I, you know, another, just to bring it back to the five to thrive, another HSP five to thrive thing is to understand the trait. Yeah. And I think it's really helpful when you're teaching your child that your children, let's because this is for everyone really, when you're teaching your children that they're they're perfect just the way they are. Well, you can also teach them that their brain is different. Everybody is different. You know, this is a good diversity lesson. It's not just that our hair colors are different or that we live in different countries or speak different languages or have different color of skin or different color of eyes. It is also that our brains are different. And that brings us to temperament. And it's okay to teach a child, you know, notice, you know, your friend, um, Annette, you know, she likes to play with lots of people and doesn't have just one friend that's most important to her. Whereas you prefer to have a more quiet relationship with just a couple of people. You're just different. It doesn't mean she doesn't like you or you don't like her. So teaching children about their reactive brains and teaching them about the trait of sensitivity, sometimes I call it finely tuned and mm -hmm. noticing it in animals, um, because 20% of most animals are also highly sensitive. Using animals is a great way um, to teach children about sensitivity. And another great way are children's books. Like I love, and I read out loud on my YouTube channel, Violet Shrink. In fact, I'll try to put that link in the notes here. Um, there are a few books and I'm gonna start reading more books. I think a great book on difference is Rainbow Fish. If you're an English speaker, um, Rainbow Fish is a really lovely book on diversity and difference. And another one for this age group is Giraffes Can't Dance. I oh, love that book. one. Oh. <laughs> I read that book to my son so many times I had it memorized. Yeah. So, and another one is Stella Luna um, by Janelle Cannon. So I'm going to be digging out. I loved reading Violet Shrink on YouTube and I want to help parents. So I'm going to be reading more of these books on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, um, I want to just say too, one more thing about anxiety before we move on to other topics, um, because when anxiety becomes a habit, you have to create other habits to help replace it, right? And this applies to adults too. This is a challenge in my own life. I do. I need to do this all the time. But what I'm talking about here is, um, say, more time outdoors, more sleep, fewer activities. Um, a really long bedtime routine that starts with a very early dinner and maybe even a bath before dinner to really help your child wind down. Because remember, sensitive brains, reactive brains, they don't start resting right away. They keep working even at rest. It takes a really long time for the brain to stop working. And I'll tell you what, just knowing that makes me anxious. <laughs> and it's really frustrating, but it's really true. So um, how do we help our seven-year-old children, our 17-year-old children, or our, you know, 57-year-old selves, or, you know, whatever, how do we help all of our brains actually get rest by slowing it down and stopping that multitasking that we were starting before this officially, that we were talking about before yeah. this officially started? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, exactly. Ah, okay. 
It yeah. makes me think of about a million things. Do you have a topic you want to bring up in that? Oh, and then I know what I'd like to ask you to talk about. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> put on, I'll put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> will you tell us a little bit? I know you're hosting the next Are You Highly Sensitive Live workshop on September 3rd. Will you tell us a little bit about that topic? Let's dig into that just a little bit and give people a taste of, um, of why it's important and what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, well, first, of all, I'm really excited about doing that. And I'm really grateful to you for, for giving me that opportunity to be a host on your uh, Are You Highly Sensitive? Um, so that's great. And so the topic I'm going to talk about then is also relating a little bit, I think, to, to how you deal with being anxious and stuff, because I think a lot of it um, often has to do with uh, being aware of what's going on and also having if you have more set boundaries, more, uh, I think boundaries are always, it's a word that sounds very strict, like you have to have boundaries. And it sounds like uh, like what you do with children, that you need to keep boundaries to, to keep, keep them contained or safe or, or uh, brave or whatever, whatever you could say by it. But I think boundaries are more of a um, way to protect yourself and to have boundaries for other people like this is what I like and this is what I don't like about uh, situations and basically to create the, the, the environment for yourself that you need and where you can thrive on and so I think that's why boundaries are so important because it, I mean it's in in all situations if, if someone is asking you something or uh whatever it is to feel comfortable in saying no and i mean there's much more to to saying no in the boundaries section right so it's it's yeah. a very big topic i think and it also relates very much to to having uh awareness because if you don't know what you need it's also impossible to create boundaries around this so um, I think that's where um, what you also said just now, that you have to start with being aware of how, how do I feel, being mindful of yourself and, and of your body. What, what do I need? What do I want? Um, so I, I think sometimes, too, when, when you're overstimulated, it's hard to recognize that you're out of balance. I, yeah. I love when you talk about this as, as, you know, creating balance in your life and it, it, the awareness is hard. You know, I have this blog called the hard things and, um, it's from over a year ago. So, um, but it's, you know, I just talk about like when things are hard, that's all they are is hard. But if you spin out on them, I'll speak for myself. If I spin out on them, then I can become so overstimulated that yes, I feel pretty anxious. And then I'm not able to even notice that I haven't had good boundaries, that I haven't had balance. Yeah. So how do you, how do we support people in having that awareness that you're talking about? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's partly to do with uh, being, uh, you, you need the awareness of your body and of your soul, so to say, to, mm -hmm. to what it is that's good for you. And to also to become aware of, I mean, if you walk into a situation uh, on your work, for example, and it's busy and a lot of people asking your attention and demanding stuff, and you feel like you need to do all these things and you are, you're not, uh, you just feel obliged to do whatever is, is there and you focus too much on the outside. And I think just focusing more on the inside and because we HSPs, we often, we tend to look outside and what's needed is what we fulfill, right? And so the, the need right. to focus more inside, like, what do I feel? How do I feel about this situation? That is something that is, is, is something I would say you would have to start with. But also, um, sometimes I'm also thinking like, well, it's so easy to always say people ask this of me and I can't do anything about it. And so we, we tend to go to the victim role sometimes a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Like I can't mm -hmm. help myself. It's just who I am. I just get inflicted and I just have problems with these situations. And so I also think you need to take sort of re uh, responsibility for this is how I feel. This is how I, this is what I need. And to really step into that and, and to own it. And to yeah. do that, of course, you also need acceptance for like, yes, I am highly sensitive and I do need different things than what other people may need. And that's, I think, often also very hard. 
Oh, it's so hard. And I, you know, the thing is, I was talking to, to Elizabeth, the mom, about having a habit of anxiety. Mm-hmm. I think we can just have a habit of um, saying yes. And I think it really comes from the E, our empathy, our high empathy. Yeah. Because it's, and I, you know, I just taught two workshops on self-compassion. And um, one of these days, they'll be in that online school we keep talking about making. But, um, you know, it's infinitely easier for me to have empathy toward others than mm-hmm. it is to have empathy toward myself. And I was just reading or... Uh, maybe I was listening. I can't remember. I was studying something to, um, you know, self-care meditation type thing last night to unwind from flying. And, um, I, it was really interesting. It said that it makes a big difference. If you just start your day with maybe a little bit of a smile, even if it's fake, like if you just turn the corners of your mouth up, um, just by engaging those muscles, it releases endorphins. And um, the other thing was to start with a positive statement. Oh, I know where it was. It was actually in Noom, which is the weight loss app I've been, uh, that I like to use. And I, I try to get back on it every year just to restudy all yeah. this you know, self-care stuff. It's in, right now it's all about stress. The whole week is on stress. Mm. And, um, and I thought, oh yeah, that's age old wisdom. There's nothing new there. But so when I start my day that way, then I have more self-compassion then I'm more likely to have kind self-talk when things are feeling out of balance rather than only kindness toward others, which can be a real HSP pitfall. Yeah. I, think that's one of the, I think that's one of the primary reasons it's hard for us to have, have good boundaries yeah. is because we, we, we can see, just because I always say this, just because you can walk in the room and see what every single person in the room needs doesn't mean that you're the one who's supposed to provide it. Exactly. That's not how emotional leadership is supposed to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. I mean, that's that's why they also in the plane, right? You have to help yourself first because before you can help a different person. And I think that's so very true because, and I think a lot of HSPs always also are afraid that they are being selfish or yes. I don't know, being rude. Or you can think of so many things why you you wouldn't allow yourself to take care of yourself. But I'm also thinking, I mean, have we met HSPs who are very selfish and rude and, and very unfriendly? I'm, I really have to think very hard in my, my long uh, line of, of people I have met. And, and there hardly are any uh, rude HSPs, I think. I mean, we are so considerate. So that's something I, th- I always say, don't worry about being selfish. I mean, it's, it's, I, I would say it's almost impossible for an HSP to be selfish, right? So, and also knowing, I mean, what would you say to a friend if, if they would say this to you, like, oh, I really need some downtime, but I need to help people and, um, or, or be there for someone, even though I don't have the time I mean, we know that it's okay you would to say, take oh, care. No, how rude of you! How selfish <laughs> of you! <laughs> no, never. Exactly. I mean, it's not rude to take care of yourself, right? I mean, especially if you. I mean, most of the time, when you take a good care of yourself, it's also easier to do what you want for others. So, right. and that's the goal, right? I mean, that's that you Absolutely. feel good about. Uh, helping others as well. I mean, that's often what we want to do. And I think to, to do that fully and, and in a way that's really helpful, we first need to take care of ourselves. I think sometimes HSPs, okay, first of all, I want to say that when I get completely overdone, overtired, overstimulated, I can have a, a childish meltdown <laughs> and just lose it. And that, that might appear rude, but it's never even in that situation, it's not inflicted. It's not outward. It's inward, Mm. you know, but, but the 80% folks out there who don't know about sensitivity and don't honor your sensitivity, they may think you're rude, but that requires education. But I think sometimes we might of the, of the people around you. And, and because of that, we might often find ourselves in, you know, environments, say as parents or at work, or large family gatherings where um, 
you know, the expectation is that you will hold it together longer than is reasonable for your nervous system to hold it together. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's also good to have some get out of jail free cards, you know, from Monopoly. (laughs) And, and, you know, those are things that you have prepared ahead of time. And we could just brainstorm a couple right now, anyone here who'd like to put in, what is your way of stepping out of a situation? I'll just give you one in a conversation. Um, that we tell parents all the time, this is always okay to say, which is that I need to think about that. I'll get back to you on it. Yeah, that's a great one indeed. I it's really hard to, you know, to immediately, because you're processing deeply, right? Yeah. And, you know, my um, colleague and um, good partner there, Monica Zimmerman, she always recommends, she works with HSPs in leadership positions in, in work. And she always says the bathroom is her favorite place. Yeah. You know, it's because, always optional, right? To go to the bathroom. I mean, right, no one right, will say, exactly. no, you can't go. So they, you can always take five minutes and, and, and relax. And wash your hands and face. I Cold water just running on your hands and your wrists can yeah. really help reset you. Or getting a wet paper towel or towel and putting it on the back of your neck. Yeah. And just taking a few deep breaths. Or looking in the mirror and say, you're different. Yeah. And it's a wonderful way that you're different. And you need to take a few breaths now Mm -hmm. and just parent yourself, you know? Well, I think one of the things is, which is also very important to realize when, when you feel like people will judge you for having different needs as the, the, the majority of people, I think that it's in, in the majority of people, the non HSP, so to say, it's very common to say or state what you need. And I mean, we accept that all the time and it's just because it's basic, like this is what we, what we want and how things work and okay, logical that you need some time, downtime, maybe after a busy day. But I think um, we, we are used to being different. So we're also, I don't know, making it different for ourselves to ask for what we need, because if you, you state in a very, uh matter of 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 uh, how do you say matter of fact style like i need to have five minutes downtime or i need to have, sit down and have like 10 minutes i want to have a cup of coffee and just relax for a minute i mean if you say it in a way that's that's just like factual style right then people won't mind so much and often right. it's 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 I not mean, a big deal to them <laughs> we tend to go into the oh I'm sorry I've, I've, I'm I'm a, I'm a little sensitive and I need some time like this and then people will go like okay I don't know what this is all about but I think when you you state it really matter of factual like this is yeah. what I need to function and if I have this I will function much better and I can be of much more value or assistance and I think that's the whole point that we learn to become confident and empowered. Like this is what I need and this is what will help me function better. And so I can help you better in doing your job better. So it's more stepping into your power, I think, and just being who you are and and stepping up for the needs that you have, I think will make so much a big difference uh, instead of like being a little bit pity and, and like, oh, I need this and I can't, I can't function otherwise or stuff like that. So I think that's really important, the way how you put things out there. I totally agree. You're making me think about um, my highly sensitive professionals. It's a five week sensitivity circle that I do sometimes, although all the sensitivity circles are on sabbatical for autumn of 2021 while I work on my book, <laughs> because I need to, you know, get, put one thing in front of me and get more yeah. focused on yeah. one thing. But what I was going to say is that um, if you hear any whinnying in the background, I do live on a small farm with my highly sensitive rescue horses that work with HSPs, but it's actually my phone that I forgot to silence. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've talked to the sensitive um, professionals about um, one great way to help your brain process, you know, cause we're processing so much during meetings. It mm-hmm. is great to take a break even during the meeting or to, so if you're feeling the need for a break, that's emotional leadership. That is emotional re- leadership. It's a great thing to suggest it because probably at least half the room also would love a break and probably 90% of them will benefit from a break, but mm-hmm. 
I like to tell sensitive people to write down what you're thinking, write down what you're hearing, write down what you're thinking, go, go everywhere with pen and paper. Even if you're dealing with your, your spouse or your, or your teenager or your child to write down what you're thinking. And then you can always go back to it later. And let's take a moment though, just to say who we are, what we're doing. We've been on here for a long time. You know, people go in and out of these Facebook live things. So um, I think, we should, we have a few more minutes here and let's just reintroduce ourselves. I'll let you start. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, great idea. That's true. I mean, most people won't know uh, maybe who we are. So that's a great idea. Um, so uh, I'm Annette de Swart. We should have started with this. <laughs> we, did. we did start with it, but we're doing oh, okay. it again. Yeah, and uh, I'm in the Netherlands and I've uh, been a, a life coach for highly sensitive people for uh, I think a little over 10 years now um, also working with people uh, on, on burnout and stress problems uh, and anything related to that and at the moment I am working uh, one-on-one with people but also uh, doing group programs on there's one in September starting on uh, becoming an empowered HSP and I'm also working on a course to become a confident HSP. So that's also very interesting because it's it's so important to 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 have more confidence uh, about yourself. Um, that, tell me your um, high sensitivity coaching website. I forgot exactly. I can't find it. I'm going to put it on the on it's here. High sensitive coaching High sensitive coaching. Thank you. Yes. I'll put it in the notes so people can look you up that way. Great. Yeah. Um, well, I think our all of our from the ICHS, the International Consultants on High Sensitivity, who monitor this Facebook page. Um, if you go to the file section, there's also information and bios about us, about all of us, and what we do, and where to find more information about our uh, programs and stuff like right. that. Yes, that's it. So I'll, I'll take a moment to and tell you that I'm um, also an international consultant on high sensitivity, and I am um, also trying to help moderate this group, <laughs> the Elaine Aaron and High Sensitivity Facebook group. Um, and on uh, probably about once a month, a few of us rotate through and are doing our best. So thank you for being gentle with us. I'm a licensed family therapist in the US and as an ICHS, a consultant, I work with people all over the world about high sensitivity. And I think some of my passion projects right now are my YouTube channel where I'm trying to put a lot of good content and, um, and I'm really looking for subscribers. Please subscribe to me on YouTube. If I could get to a thousand subscribers and you know, remember introvert, I'm not really doing much marketing. <laughs> I would be able to have a little bit of advertising, which would help support the YouTube channel. So that would be a huge benefit to me. And the other one is, are you highly sensitive live? These twice a month workshops and um, growing things that we're offering, like these Facebook lives. This is um, definitely a part of, are you highly sensitive? And one of the reasons that we're on here today is because I'm so excited. I'm going to be on sabbatical in September and Annette will be leading the Are You Highly Sensitive Live workshops in September. So um, we'll be putting the links below if you would like to register or if you'd like to get both workshops for only $37, you can become a member of Are You Highly Sensitive Live. And it's, um, let's see, I think it's, I'm going to put that website in there right now too, bit.ly. I don't know if this link will work, but um, if it does, this is how you join and it's the best deal in town, let me tell you. I'm trying to make it really affordable. And if truly you can't afford um, US 37 a month, which is pretty much what it costs to produce the whole shebang, um, then we even have scholarships for people who can't afford it. So um, please, please come on September 3rd to Creating Balance in Your HSP Life with Annette. And then um, she'll be working with the parents on similar topics in um what is the date of the next one september number 20 right it's on a monday yeah september 20 so yeah. um, we'll have the links below and in and make sure that there are events on facebook that you can also use to register if you're a member you'll get recordings of <laughs> workshops so and we in, we take live questions and encourage you to put questions in um, in advance too so you don't even have to attend live 
So that is Annette and Elaine. <laughs> I yeah. love the word, one thing, the one thing I also forgot though is also I have this podcast. It's only like oh a, gosh, yes, most important thing. <laughs> yeah, almost, well, not almost, but it's it's a fun way to also get more information about high sensitivity because um, I just released yesterday the tenth episode, so it's only very recently that I started with it. But um, it's called Sensitive and Strong, and you can find it on all major uh, platform uh, podcast platforms. So. I mean, Annette, if there's a, a good link or or you could put your um, your beautiful promo for it in the notes in the comments below, I think it'd be great for people to easily find it that way. Yeah. Sensitive and strong. Annette even interviewed Elaine Aaron on the podcast. I'm so Franklin, I had an interview and next month in uh, beginning of September, I'm going to interview Tom Falkenstein from the author of the book of uh, the highly sensitive man. So that will also yeah. be very interesting. So uh, lots of interesting topics. I think I will, yeah. I will put uh, the link to the podcast uh, after we finish. Okay. Yeah. People can find it. Right? <laughs> and I will also find that, that violet shrink video. Okay, so let's talk for just a moment. Could we, as we're finishing up here, oh, we have just two or three minutes left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we are both parents of highly sensitive youth. Yes. And yes. so, you know, in, in when I was promoting this, that we were going to be here, I was saying that we're both HSPs, moms, and international <laughs> consultants on high sensitivity. And I just thought maybe we could each just say a few sentences about our journey as um, sensitive moms raising sensitive youth. Mm. I could go first since I'm surprising yeah, you with this. I just, um, my, my child actually called while we were recording this. Um, he's driving across the country to college and it's the third time that he's left to go back to college. And, you know, it's been a journey for sure. But I think that one of the things that's true of my parenting journey is that of my sensitive youth is that we are more connected than some parents and children. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of parents are sort of, of course you miss your child when they go to college, if you're not highly sensitive, it's, I'm not implying that at all. It's really hard to send our kids off at the same time. There's also a relief and I'm not going to say I wasn't relieved to do less laundry and cooking <laughs> that really freed up my life. But I think the heart connection is so strong. And of course it remains when he's far away, but it breaks my heart just a little bit each time he leaves. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I stay connected with him and it's really important to me because those deep connections are part of being highly sensitive. And the last thing I'll say is even though he's 20, he still needs parenting and he still needs our support as his parents. So um, I think it's my special challenge is I'm, I'll end with this. My special challenge is to be available, to be holding space for him and offering some parental support without being too much in his mix, to let him find his path, but still be present. And to remember that um, although he, we do develop more slowly and launch into adulthood more slowly than people who are not sensitive, we also are so much more capable. And so is my son. So, yes, I think that's very true. Very, very well said. Um, so for me, I think that's also uh, one of the things that I've, my, my daughters are uh, 17 and almost 16, uh, also on the path of becoming young adults, uh, already are maybe. And uh, I think one of the things that I've learned most, and I think is the most valuable to know is to have also faith in them that they will show you what they can do and cannot do and you have to sort of go along with that and making sure and I think especially as an HSP parent you are really good in sensing um, once you let go of fear of course <laughs> to see what your child is capable of and what it is not and to just give them a little bit of, of more way to explore and find out for themselves while being there as a safety net for them and figuring out what they want and what they need and also to really rely on your own uh, intuition often because often as HSP parents 
other people like doctors and, and teachers and everyone, they will say things about your children like they will need this, they will need that. And then your, your sensitive heart will tell you like, no, that's not it. I know that's not good for them. Or I know the best thing to go, the best way to go is that way. So, and I think it's really important to hold on to your own intuition and to follow that intuition to really uh, do as you think is right for your children. And I think that's very important because, and as, I think that's for all ages, peace and in all situations, right? We have to have confidence in our intuition that we know what is best, um, the best way to move forward. I think that's very, very important to, to really hold on to that. I, I was muted. I so agree. And I think these are, um, that's, those are beautiful words of wisdom. Annette, it's been so fun to talk to you. I love yes. that you can be in the Netherlands and I can be in the US and in California and we can have a friendship and see each other and help help you know teach and support HSPs together. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Thanks yes. for being part of my community. Yeah, thank you too, Elaine. It was great talking to you today. Yeah, with today. Yeah. Mm. Our first Facebook Live. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> see you next time. Absolutely.